Hey everyone, give me a second, I'm going to just check some things out and then get the stream started. Okay. Let's get some music going. Stay on. All right, you might hear double audio for a second as I check on Twitch. All right, you might hear double audio for a second as I check on Twitch. All right, you might hear double audio for a second. Right, cool. Yeah. That is working. All right, thank you for joining this morning's ZBrush live stream, everyone. Um, happy 4th of July if you're in the States. Uh, happy Thursday or Friday if you're not. <laughs> um, my name is Eamon Akhtar, and I'm going to be doing my ZBrush stream, 3D printing from ZBrush and ZBrush Ideas to Reality. If you go to pixelogic.com ZBrush Live Presenters, you can see all of these awesome artists sharing their workflows, their projects live with you. Uh, and if you scroll down to Eamon Akhtar, you can see my past broadcasts and schedules. I usually do today, like right now, Thursdays, 10 to noon. And you can see some of my work on here. Fungusaurus, my independent toy line that I've been developing. Some 3D printed dress stuff and all sorts of toys. I'm going to switch to music that is slightly less ominous. It's way too ominous. And you can see all of my previous uh, videos on here. So I do a lot of 3D printing ideas, but I, whatever I really want to sculpt, I'll start prototyping in 3D. So last week I went over uh, an idea from silicone uh, molding and using a 3D printed mold. Uh, casting basically using a 3d printed mold before that I was doing articulation so we're gonna jump back into articulation a bit uh, basics about me I'm a 3d artist been in 3d for VFX toys games and animation for about a decade uh, five of those past years in LA and you can see more of my work on aim 3d.com I am live on twitch and on ZBrush live and Facebook and pretty much everything I'm on this restream chat so this is Eamon. So if you guys type anything, I'll be able to see it. Hey there, model 3 d on YouTube. What's going on? Thanks for joining. Make sure this is low volume. Hard to control it to just 1%. There it is. Okay. If you haven't already signed up for the ZBrush Live uh, Sculpt Off or tried to, uh, the ZBrush Summit application is live. And you can join us at the ZBrush Summit in Los Angeles. I believe it's in September. Let me confirm the date. When does the ZBrush Summit happen? Friday, September 27th. So you can just look up summit.pixelogic.com. I'm just going to turn the music off for now. It's a bit distracting. So the Pixelogic Summit is coming up in September. If you all want to sign up or register, now's the time to do it. Another announcement is that Pixelogic and ZBrush will be at Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con, and I will be there as well. I recently... Just got my San Diego Comic Con ticket thing. The 50th Comic Con, so I'm excited to go back. I haven't been back in a couple of years. And I'll share this link in the comments, pixelogic.com slash Comic Con. If any of you are making it out, there's a whole bunch of uh, awesome artists that will be presenting. There's Pixelogic's booth. Comic Con is massive. And there'll be a bunch of artist demos. So we've, of course, got Joseph Druss. We've got Paul Gabry. And we've got a bunch of other artists uh, from Funko, um, a few freelancers. On Friday, July 19th, I'll be on there, sandwiched between Hasbro and Sideshow Collectibles. 
So a great lineup if you want to come uh, swing by the booth if you're at Comic Con. I'll be showing all sorts of my processes probably about Fungusaurs. But yeah, check out ZBrush at Comic Con. Okay, so if any of you have seen my streams, you know the usual shtick is that I start with a bit of show and tell, uh, going over last week's projects, you know, 3D printed, and then it'll jump into this week's project. And you'll have to bear with me because this week's project is a bit strange. I'm going to try to build an articulation keying IMM brush live, uh, so there's bound to be some weirdness happening. But... Uh, I'm going to try to develop this brush and hopefully you can help me uh, test it. All right, so show and tell. So what have I been up to for the past few weeks? I did the Cubone project, which is a 3D printed mask. This one kind of fits on me, I think. Yep. So this is based on the Pokemon Cubone. And this is what I'll be rocking for Comic Con. So if you come see a spot of Cubone, say hi, that'll probably be me. And I made a matching one for my dog, Kuma. So there's two of them. And so I'll give this all painted and it should look pretty good. The other cool part is that I made some little bones. So this one's Kuma's bone. And this one's my bone. <laughs> So if you see a guy doing this at Comic-Con, that's going to be me. And I'll get this stuff all painted up. And you may notice just the duct tape down the middle. Well, that'll be covered up later as well with some leather. So I haven't really decided how I'm doing this, but basically something like this. Yeah. That should be fun to twirl around the con. And hopefully less likely to break that way too. Because that's why I had to uh, duct tape it in the first place. I smacked it on the ground and broke it in two pieces. That's what happens when you're trying to have fun doing stuff like this all the time. Alright. So the Cubone project is still going. That'll probably go through next week when I start painting this stuff up and wear the mask. Another project that I've been working on, of course, is my Fungusaurus project. And we've got a couple of them here. These are printed in FDM, so with your standard printers. Mine's printed on a Raise 3D N2 Plus using PLA plastic and if you think the results are really smooth that's because I also did a coating of XTC on these. XTC is a solution like a two-part epoxy resin that you can mix and just brush onto your prints and it helps to smooth them out. There it is. So that's XTC 3D if you're interested in making your FDM 3D prints a bit nicer and smoother and softer. So there's my Paradox character. I'm going to be getting a tattoo of this guy soon. I really like this character. He's got those puppy dog eyes. And we're developing a mobile game to bring the toys to life and augmented reality as well as children's book, animation, the whole shebang. So there's that character. And then there's another one. This is Salamander. So this is a Dimetrodon mixed with a turkey tail mushroom. And turkey tails are the shelf mushrooms. So if you go by a tree, you'll often see them sticking out of a tree like this. Just this back pattern. But yeah, these two are going to a client who bought them recently when we were doing a sale on fungusaurus.com and on our Instagram channels. These are custom prints done specifically for them. If you're interested in following this project, you can follow on Instagram.com Fungusaurus. You can see all of the cute little characters. 
and all of our development as we hit the expo circuit, bounce around, try to get this thing happening. I'll share that link in the chat. Whoop. Got a few more questions. Is Model 3D saying, is Z Modeler good for sculpting characters? I like it for Z model or specifically the tool is great for bridging things and doing some poly modeling in ZBrush. Um, do, is it good for characters? Depends. Really, ZBrush is a sculpting application, so it's good for whatever you use it for. You look like an Arab. I'll take that as a compliment. Um, I am, I guess, historically from Arabia. Um, I think my great ancestors were Yemenis, uh, but I was born and raised in Pakistan. Okay. So back to it. Yeah, so those are my fungusaurs. And then continuing the show and tell away from these guys and do some more projects that we worked on last week. Okay, so this guy is one of my latest projects, also a project for a client. And what's cool about him is that he's posable. So not, it's kind of Gumby-esque and it's not like perfectly posable because it's simply a wire inside but this is a silicone body that I poured onto a 3D printed mold basically to cast this body. So I can show you what that looks like. If I can reach it. Okay. So here's the 3D printed mold. You can see it's done in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. And when you open it up, it you can pour silicone into there and put the armature in place. So there's a wire armature that was placed on there first, and then I poured the rest. And it turned out pretty sweet. I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. I've got to do a bunch of seam cleanup, but then this should be ready to send off to the client shortly. So these are the kind of experiments I do in the stream as well as just in my career. I'm always trying some new projects that involve 3D printing or taking an idea in my head and making it real. So I'm pretty psyched with how this is turning out because it's quite flexible, quite posable, and the client wants to use this for stop motion animation, so hopefully they'll be able to do that. And they'll get to see some animation out of this character soon. So yeah, that's this character, and if you watch the stream a couple of weeks back, then you'll get to see how I did this in 3D in ZBrush. All right, and then lastly, uh, what I wanted to do for show and tell is this character that I've been promoting on social media as well as in today's stream posts. So this is a character that, let me actually jump into ZBrush briefly, is done for another client, Shannon Victoria. And this is her uh, serendipity doll. And it's colored green like that because that's the color that I denote for when I'm sure a model is decimated and hollowed and ready to send to print. I just color it green so I know in my zebra scene that it is good. And I'll switch to a scene where you can see the breakdown of the articulation. It's got a head and a cap of the head that comes off. The eyes can fit into the head right there. The head is a snap-in pin onto the body, and then the body connects to the lower body, and then the ball joints for the arms, the hinge joints for the elbows and the knees, pivot joints for the hands, and the pivot joints for the feet. And I did most of this using a custom IMM brush and ZBrush that I've been developing. So the goal today is to try to complete that brush. Um, I like the hinge joints it spits out. I like the snap-in pins. 
Uh, oftentimes articulation needs custom work. Um, as you can see with this ball joint, I was trying to do a hook on the inside that I could connect a rubber band all the way through uh, the body and then just hook it on two ends just to see if that would work. It did not work, but I came up with a better solution. And it involves rubber bands throughout the inside and that way I can keep uh, it flexible and still give it the range of motion that it deserves. So this project I wanted to show you how it turned out. And I'll have to show you in parts and pieces because it's not all put together. But this is the highlight piece where I've got this doll printed in clear resin on a form 2 and you can see some of the pieces. There's the head. You can see it's articulatable. If I pull it out, it snaps out. And it's a snap-in pin joint there. Let's just snap back into. The arm is a ball joint and the body as well kind of a ball joint, all connected with rubber bands, so it gives you that range of motion. And the arms, you can see, are also in there connected with rubber bands. So what I ended up doing was I ran a rubber band right through the center cavity this way and connected the one arm directly to the other arm. And then I connected a rubber band from the inside of that through to the bottom of the body. And that's been really great for keeping these arms in check because if this rubber band gets too long, you can just pull this body and then the rubber band snaps into place again. And you can see I'm just holding this in place right now with a little stick because the legs are going to come in here and pop in here. And then those are going to be fit to the rubber band as well that's connecting to the body. And that way the whole thing can be kind of put together using these rubber bands. And so these are industrial strength rubber bands. They're not the standard stuff you can get uh, when you go to a grocery store. It's there's this brand it's called Rescue Essentials. They're pretty strong industrial strength rubber bands. You can get them on Amazon. They come in different sizes. Like this is the standard size they come in, kind of long and thick and you know really tough. Um, and what I did is I took the smallest size that it came with and then I cut that a little bit so that it's really thin. And that's what I'm using for my articulation on the inside of my model. So now you're getting to see a few different types of articulation. Stop motion articulation with silicone and a wire armature inside. And then more traditional armature, uh, tr more traditional uh, articulation of like a do doll or a toy uh, with rubber bands inside. So the ball joint, the hinge joint working pretty well. And then the snap-in pin working pretty well for the hand and then the head. The hand didn't move at all. I have to make sure that's working. So that's about it for the doll. I've got a lot more pieces printed that still need cleanup and still need to be joined to each other and that'll be my plan hopefully later today getting that doll done and uh, I'll just take some nice photos and show you all next week. But I wanted to go into the process of articulation here and show how I go about articulating a character like this. Uh, if you were watching the video stream a couple weeks ago, I did just that. But the goal today is to do it with a different character, really test out that uh, brush pretty thoroughly, and then I'll try to put it up, upload it on Gumroad and then see if you guys can test it out for me. So that's basically the plan for today. I'm going to run it on this Ecorche character, and yeah, we'll see how it works. I like pretty much most of the articulation you know, models I've got in here. I'm not a fan of the ball joint boolean, so that's the one I'm going to be trying to fix in this stream today. I'm going to be working on this ball joint boolean, and if we can get that working, then I'll upload it to Gumroad and then have you guys test it out as a complete set because I've got a ball joint in there but it requires a lot of you know working by hand and I want it to be kind of a simple kind of cut 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 process and then there you go you have your joint so that's what I'll be working on today is my keys and articulation ZBrush IMM brush I think I'll just call it aim keys or something like that to keep it simple you know there's damn standard there can be aim keys 
And yeah, so that's kind of what I'll be working on. I'll turn the music up and chime in and talk when I need to. You may hear my dog Kuma barking in the background time to time. But that's the plan for today's stream. So that's it for the show and tell portion of this. And now I'll jump into ZBrush and start sculpting. And let's see here. I'm checking your uh, ZBrush streams. Uh, I'm checking your chat messages. So time to time. I don't check them constantly, but I'll check them time to time. And if you have any questions or any concerns, just drop them in there and I'll answer as soon as I can. Bharat Dunder, hey, what's going on? Thank you for joining. Jorge Vasquez Guerrero, hi master, hello back. Let's see, please talk to me. <laughs> Bharat, I will talk, I am talking. Uh, ZBrush before, after, beginner tutorials. Uh, this is kind of a beginner stuff, but this is like medium advanced stuff. Winston Eakin, what's going on Winston? Thanks for joining. Okay, cool. So let's get this show on the road uh, and get into developing the ZBrush Keys and Articulation IMM brush. Okay, I'll pull this chat window off to my other monitor. Let's turn the music back up a little bit. <clears throat> All right, we got about 40 people watching on Twitch. That's cool. Probably more on YouTube and Facebook and Facebook Live and ZBrush live so let's get the ball rolling okay so there's the articulated character and that's what it looks like when it's all done I changed the pose to be more of a T pose because I know that that'll work better for articulation like a T pose or like a rest pose is good if your arms are down too low it makes it very hard to do articulation so I'm, I just popped them to the side and we'll be doing articulation on this character and then we'll switch gears and try it on a different model just so we can see a range maybe on this one let's see how this looks on a slightly more beefy character this is an ecorche model that I made a few years back really simplified anatomy just trying to find the insertion points and the volumes. And so I'll be using this as my testing for the articulation. Go ahead and do auto groups, split the base off. Looks like it also popped the eyes off and I don't need that to happen. I think I'll keep the eyes in this model for now. Merge down, duplicate it. <coughs> Let's try a Dynamesh. And you see when I do a Dynamesh at a really low resolution, you lose all the detail. So I just need to up the resolution. Let me know if the music's too loud or if it's bugging you and I'll switch it off. Alright, so at a thousand resolution, we lose a bit of detail. So I'm going to crank it up to 2000. Yeah, and that lets us preserve most of the detail. There are about 2 million polys. So that'll be our working resolution. Let's go to this character. 
Same thing, about 2 million polys, but that's about 1,500 in this model file. All right, cool. So in order to articulate these characters, I'm using this IMM brush that I created. And it's got my keys as well as my Boolean keys, uh, both for just joining two pieces together and also for articulation. So I'm going to be working to improve this brush throughout today's stream. And the way I built this brush is all as like tools, tools of its own. So here you can see a snap-in pin boolean and the way this works is you just throw it into your model and it cuts the outside and the inside and because it's got a little bit of thickness to it the pieces should just snap into each other and work like a socket. I've also got just the pins by themselves so you can play around with those. A free rotation one which means it can spin full 360 and then a limited one which means it can basically snap in but it can't turn full 360. A tapered round, tapered square, this is my most commonly used type of key and a tapered square boolean. Probably this is my most commonly used key to join multiple pieces together. I've got a hinge boolean that was built based on the principles of Joseph Drust a hinge joint that he demonstrated uh, when ZBrush booleans first came out. And so this is this works really well. You just drop it in place, you get a working hinge joint. I'll try to show you how that works. We got Miguel Izquierdo Reyes on YouTube saying articulations, yay! Okay, good. <laughs> that stream is going to be awesome and very educational. I try. I do try to make him educational a bit. Okay. So, wanted to show you the leg pieces that I've got here and how they simply kind of they should anyways snap into place like that and then when you put the pin in there it should work as a hinge some pieces turned around there but this is basically the character's leg and you see it works pretty well as a hinge joint and all I did there was use this hinge boolean and ZBrush as a cutter and it worked really well like that So these, this brush is built upon principles of actually printing these pieces out using a Form 2 3D printer and then testing them out. So the, though they may not work for all cases, it's a good start. Here's a hinge joint for if you want to build it from scratch. Here's a ball joint for if you want to build it from scratch. And then what I'm working on today is the ball joint boolean. So something similar to the hinge boolean, but that actually cuts out a perfect ball joint from the get-go. So I'll, I'll demonstrate this first so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. Otherwise, it's just confusing. Whoop. And let me know if I leave the screen up too big sometimes, because I do that sometimes. So what I want to do is demonstrate this hinge boolean joint and show you how this works so you get the idea of what I'm trying to build for the ball joint. So I'll switch over to my IMM keys brush. Navigate over to my hinge boolean. And let's go over to the legs here. Let's do it for one side first and I'll draw it out. Holding shift as I draw so that it comes out perfectly uh, parallel. It looks like I sque squished it a little bit. I don't want it to squish. There we go. And then I'll once I've drawn it out, I'll split unmasked points. And that'll put it on its own layer. Next, I'm going to move it into place just using my transpose bar. Move it up slightly. 
And you can do whatever you want with these. You can rotate these. Really, it's whatever range of motion you're going for and how you're doing it. So there's no clear rule. I think I'll rotate it up a little bit. And move this up a little bit. Let's try scaling the whole thing down just a bit. And let's see what this is looking like. So what I'm going to do now is set this to be a boolean cutter. And in order to see that, you have to make sure your render and then render booleans live boolean is turned on. And then you'll see it cut through the model and how it should be looking. What's great about the live booleans is when you have it on, you can actually move your model live and see those changes happening. I'm just trying to find like a good placement for it. That lines up kind of with anatomy. And you can clean these models up after they boolean as well. This is just kind of a starting point. And so once you have that in place, you can go to Booleans, Make Boolean Mesh. And it should think about it for a second, and then it'll make a new ZBrush tool. You can see it's thinking. Alright, and there it is up there. It's made it its own tool. So I'll append it into my scene, just so I'm working in the same scene. And there's my Boolean mesh. And I'm going to check in the polyframe. It looks like it's all one group. But what I want to do is click Auto Groups and it should pop the leg off onto its own piece. And the pin. So we'll do a split, group split. And we should see the pin, which is just that pin on its own. The body. And then the leg. It's going to color it all white so there's no confusion. Let's turn solo off. And I'll try to demo how this may work. Uh, the whole house is shaking. I'm thinking that there's an earthquake going on, guys, so hold on a second. Be right back. Sorry for the interruption there, folks, but we just had a legit earthquake in LA. Like, the whole place was shaking. Like, I don't know if you could tell, but 
my printers were shaking, all of my statues, collectibles, everything in the room, like the whole place was just vibrating. Started slow and then got bigger and bigger and bigger. I never felt that before. That was really, really crazy. All right, let's see here. Uh, looking at the restream chat. Uh, Antonio Zamburu on Facebook. Wow, great lesson. Search for recording later as he has to leave. Yeah, the recording will be posted live to uh, the, the portal. Winston Eakin saying that was crazy to see. Yeah, I've never uh, seen an earthquake happen live on stream either. Any of you folks in LA? Like, did you feel that? Like, this is nuts. Kurt saying be safe, mate. Thanks, Kurt. Oh boy, that was a really, really uh, strange uh, feeling right there. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now I'm going to just get back to the stream as if nothing happened. All right, it's strange. Restream chat isn't seeming to showing me the uh, what you guys are saying on Twitch, but I'm going to periodically check into Twitch so I can see what everyone's saying. Tim the Ancient, that originated a bit east of Bakersfield, so I'm guessing you felt it too. That was nuts. All right, so my point was demonstrating uh, how the hinge Boolean cutter works, and if I rotate from the corner, and this is just kind of approximating, you can see how the model will rotate to there in the back, and in the front it'll get stopped because there's a limiter. So it'll kind of stop itself right as soon as it hits that point. It won't be able to penetrate through. You know, it's not like it can go through the model. But on the back side, it'll stop there. So you get a good range of motion. And that's what articulation is all about. It's getting the range of motion that you want uh, and still making the model look appealing. And what I want to do is create a ball joint boolean that works that well. Because right now the ball joint boolean is a bit of a complicated process. It's a much more complex piece. It's like not just three parts. It is three parts, but it's just pretty complex. Usually it's four parts. All right. So now you get the idea of what I'm trying to build. So I'm going to go back to my tool. And this is the ball joint I've got right now, which is how I built ball joints in the past using ZBrush. And you can tell it's a few different pieces. It's my snap-in pin. Which I've got the cutter there for, as well as the snap-in pin itself. So there's the snap-in pin that's the center of the ball joint and that's what allows the shoulder ball to just go up and down. Uh, no, actually, though, that's the one that allows it to rotate in place. So it can rotate full 360. And then there's another one that is around it, which is this piece. And that's what allows the ball joint to go up and down. So one part allows it to rotate, another part allows it to go up and down. And usually this is the point that gets dropped into the shoulder and then this becomes the bicep so imagine that's the deltoid and this is the bicep that's how you think about these things very structurally very kind of like an engineer would uh, monster method on twitch is asking I'm not sure if I missed it but did you share your key sub tool I have not shared it just yet no I'm still in the process of building it so you guys will see at the end of the stream I'll try to share it and then we'll uh, you guys can test it out for me all right, so that's basically how a ball joint works, and you've got the, ce the center pin, which is what you're trying to rotate all of this around. And what I want to do is create a Boolean cutter that can simplify this process, so rather than you know, being such a multi-part process where you have to sculpt it all in place, it kind of, you can drop it in place for any shoulder and it should work. So the way I started thinking about this was a boolean cutter for just the 
the pin part. And here's the two pieces that I came up with. And this will do two one things. One, this can separate from the body. And then this piece can create the pin. And then I've got this third piece that I've created, which should help create that articulation separator. So what I'm going to do right now is just do a test. I'm going to merge these three pieces together and then try to use those as booleans and see what happens before I build it any further. Duplicate that. Merge down. All right, so I've got three pieces here built together for my boolean. Ah, that one has not been decimated, so it's a bit uh, chunky. Let me decimate it first. Go to my Dynamesh, and Dynamesh it closed first. Want to make sure there's no holes in the mesh. I'll do a decimation master, pre-process current, and decimate it. Check out some of your comments in the meantime. Let's see. Marcelo Prunaro saying you can get that type of rubber from tire tubes. Yeah, the industrial strength rubber for the <laughs> articulation. Fallen King of Bavaria says now you can make the mannequin boss from Silent Hill. Yes, exactly. Still thinking about this, so I'll let it think. Uh, Winston Eakin saying he's in Seattle, so didn't feel that, but yeah, it was pretty crazy to go through that earthquake just now. That was the largest one I felt. I'm, I'm in East LA, kind of. I'm in like Highland Park area. You don't really feel uh, earthquakes like that here. But my friend is staying over from the Bay Area, and so he's just like chilling. <laughs> All right, here we go. Decimated that down, and now I'll merge it down. All right, so here's my brush made out of a few different pieces. There's the pin. There's the cutter for the shoulder joint, and then there's the cutter for the uh, body. And what I'm going to do is just go to it from the side angle, because that's how I usually draw them out in uh, my models. And I'll go to Create Insert Mesh, New. And so that should be now on its own, and we can test it out. So I'll go back to this gal that we were trying to articulate earlier and I'll just draw it out holding shift as I draw and I'll split unmasked points and move it into place move it in a bit And I guess what I also want to do is turn on transparency mode so I can see on the inside to make sure it's working the way I expect. So you want this to go pretty deep into the body so that uh, you, you don't want it to intersect. So you don't want it to go so far that it starts to hit the other side of the ball joint coming from the other arm. But you want it to go pretty deep in there and you want it to be as large as it can without peeking out of the shoulder. So I'm just going to run it like this and see what happens. My pin is sticking out of the edge, so that's important. Make sure that's slightly more out. All right, so that should work in theory. I can try to set the whole thing as a Boolean cutter and see what it does in one go. I'll switch to a music that has slightly less dialogue. Okay, let's get this going again. I'm going to go to 
my main model that I'm trying to articulate as the only boolean that's on. Turn off any other model just because I don't want any complications and I'll say boolean make boolean mesh. All right, looks like it's done. I'll append that model in place. Turn off these ones. And there you have it. There's the auto boolean. It's doing auto groups. And it should now split the body and the arm and the pin. So let's see what happens. I'm not really sure what's going to happen right now. Split, group, split. All right, so that's wrong already. We don't want that piece cut out of the center. The pin also looks like it's getting cut in multiple pieces, so that's not right. But this is not bad, actually. This is a good start. This should be perfectly circular, in my opinion, it's just so that it works better. Right now it looks like it would be limited after a certain point. And then yeah, the pins are all in too many pieces. And in, in theory this cutter here for the shoulder should be able to create a perfect ball joint. So whereas it works really well for the body as a stopper, this part I like. I don't like how it turns uh, the rest of these pieces into just useless garbage. So I'm going to delete that and do it again. Just to keep the scene clean, I'll also. Uh, delete any of the useless ones that we've already worked on. Okay. So you're going to come back to this mesh. I'm going to turn on my cutter again. But instead of doing them all in one go, I'm going to try to split this process into multiple parts and see if that works any better and see what I can learn from that. So right now this boolean cutter is in three different pieces. So let's split it in a group split. Hmm. Cause I've got some unnecessary junk here from like an old poly grouping. That's not good. It looks like it's not actually doing anything, so I can just toss those pieces. And this is why I didn't want to release this keys brush to you guys right away, because I want to make sure it's good before I give it to you. Alright, so I got one piece, got the pin piece, and got the shoulder cutter. Good. So now I'm going to do it one by one. Or two by two. All right, so this should give me just the shoulder cut and the pin cut. So let's do that. Let's do Boolean, make Boolean mesh. <clears throat> All right, 
Still thinking, union remesh in progress. Okay, that's done. So let's append that into our scene. Turn off everything. Turn on just that. So we can take a look. I'll do an auto groups. Should split into just three parts, the shoulder, the arm, and then the pin. Split, group split. All right, so there's the ball joint. Uh, cutting into the shoulder, which is good. That actually looks really nice. Uh, we just need to smooth out this edge and that'll work really well. Then we've got the pin and that looks really nice. And then we've got this, which is the arm as well as the key that goes inside. So this isn't ideal. This, this could look better. So now we use the second part which is this cutter, and let's see if we can make it any better. Turn solo off. And here we go. So now this lets us cut this out of the mesh. So we get the pivot but it's not perfect yet either because it smooths out too it's it flattens out this area too much let's see what this does we'll do a make boolean mesh All right, so it gives us basically the internal component separated and then this pivot that keys into the body that's separated. So ultimately this isn't good enough because we'll, right now with the flat edge it's got here, it's going to stop and it's going to be limited. This needs to be perfectly circular. So this needs to be perfectly circular going into something like this without any of this curve around it. So ultimately the fault lies, if we go back to articulation brush, The fault lies in this piece. So this piece is great for cutting the one piece out of the body, but beyond that, it's, it fails to help create the rest of the parts needed. And these pieces actually, I think, are good. So what I'm gonna do is right now is try to create a better version of this, something that goes all the way around uh, the ball joint and cuts out kind of only the part that we need. And this might be a bit tricky to pull off. Because this is a decimated mesh, I think of a model that I had originally built in Maya or Moto. In theory, you could build it in uh, Z Remesher but I doubt it would work uh, right off the bat. And I kind of suck at poly modeling in ZBrush. ZBrush to me is a great tool for sculpting, but I haven't mastered, uh, and this is my own fault, I haven't mastered poly modeling as well in ZBrush as I, I do in Maya or Modo. 
Let's try going to Z remesher and see what it gives us if we try to Z remesh this thing. So I'm just going to go and click on Z remesher. So that actually is not bad. ZBrush's algorithm is pretty freaking dope to be able to give me something that clean and figure out uh, the right uh, places to do these kinds of cuts. But ultimately, it's smoothing this area out too much, which means it's gonna be not usable. You want that to remain like a hard, crisp edge. Well, I could try doing the sculpting method. This may not work well at all, but I'll try to just simply work it, work through the problem. We go to Dynamesh, 500 resolution. See what that gives me. Kurt Boutillieres offering to teach me poly modeling in ZBrush. <laughs> Thank you, Kurt. Z modeler is pretty intuitive once you get the hang of it. It's just I'm so much faster in other applications. <laughs> this Dynamesh is taking forever. I may just have crashed the brush. We'll see. See if it comes back to life. What are y'all working on while you're watching this? Any fun projects? Drop it in the chat. Love to know what you all are up to. All right, ZBrush looks to be quite stuck. The 568 resolution just dying right now. going through Facebook and looking at all my friends' uh, earthquake posts. That was a huge quake. Uh, everyone is just shocked by that. Alright, ZBrush is janked, so I'm just gonna close it. Let's start over. I'll pull open the scenes that I want to work on and figure out how to make a boolean ball joint cutter. All 
All right. Kill the range. Double the seam. AA half. Load in. My keys articulation brush model. Draw that out. Here's some earlier versions I was experimenting with. See if it does it again. Nope, that time it worked. So what I'm doing right now is just preparing my brush the way it was before ZBrush crashed. So I've got this one piece as a cutter. And then this is the piece that I'm trying to change up because I don't like the way this works. And when I tried dynameshing this piece, it tanked. So I'm hoping it doesn't do that again. Save the scene before I try again. <laughs> Jiang Shan saying, welcome to the ZBrush Restart Alliance. It's a guaranteed uh, thing when you're doing a stream or a live teaching demo that things are going to go wrong. All right, so what I'm going to do now is try to create this cutter just from scratch. I'm going to try to use my snap-in pin uh, just from the inside of this piece and build the whole circle around it. So let's start by appending a sphere, and we'll just use a standard sphere, move it into place, or maybe just size it up. Feels about the right size. And then I'll navigate up in this to my snap-in pin. I believe I've got one of those. Got a few different snap-in pins. Snap-in pin boolean here. Let's try duplicating that and using that first. Go to my deformation size and scale that down. I think I'm going to have to try to dynamesh this piece because the other snap-in pin is just too different uh, to work as well. It may work as a good start though, but I don't know if it'll help me finish it off. Screw it. I'm going to build this in uh, non ZBrush so I can get this done quicker and then get back to it. 
pop over to Maya for a second, do some poly modeling, and then we'll bring that model back into ZBrush. Vince Neek is saying, working on a stylized action figure right now. Nice. That's definitely my jam, too. I like uh, stylized characters. All right, so popped over to Maya. I'm going to go to create a polygon primitives and then try to create a sphere. Let's see what the default sphere looks like. That should do the trick. Navigate over to the right. I'm going to select just that top part. And I will do an extrude on there. We can do this all from the right view. First you want it to kind of taper in a little bit. Not too much, but just a little bit. We'll do another extrude. And then taper out a bit. And then taper in again. In a nutshell, that's what a snap-in pin looks like. And the, the, the ledge here, that ledge is what determines how well it's going to work. So if we look, depending on the length, we may have to change it up. This ledge has to be relatively small. This edge has to be quite long. And then this edge has to kind of be wide enough to help you pop through to there. keeping that edge as straight as we can so the only thing that tapers in is the top edge and let's just make this as flat as we can too alright so that is relatively easy enough to do in ZBrush so that is not what I needed uh, Maya for what I need Maya for is the ability to Let's see, I need to go to the back view, that's what it is. The ability to cut this part right here. Extrude out of there. Edit mesh extrude. And cut that right there. And I'll have this edge I loop around the whole thing. On the outside, extrude as well. And just pull that out. And that'll be kind of my cutter. This way I hope to get a full ball joint in one go. And I'll pull all of this together a bit. <laughs> now this should, in theory, help to reduce some cleanup. Now I'm not sure if this will work right off the bat, but I'm going to try it. I'm also going to duplicate it and scale it in. 
Now we can look at it again on the inside. I've scaled it about 0 0.9. That's probably too much. Let's see. No, nope, that works pretty well. We can see how the inside should line up in there and then stay in there. So maybe a little bit more, 0 0.95. There you go. You want it to be pretty snug in there. And I don't actually need most of this edge on the inside. I just need the ball. So I'll select that edge, pull it in, and we'll try to merge it with this leading edge on the outside. So I'll go to my mesh, normals, reverse those, combine these two pieces, and try to line this up as much as possible. So that I can then weld the points. You know, let me see if I can do a bridge because that'll be fastest. We'll do an edit mesh bridge. Get eh, probably leave that in there too, that extra line that was just created. Insert edge loop. Let's create another edge loop there. Another one right there. All right, so now I've got an internal ball joint cutter that goes all the way through to the arm. And let's see if that one works any better. So we'll go edit, delete by type history, and we'll export the selection. Let's see if we can line it up in ZBrush too. <coughs> ball cutter one. back in ZBrush. Let's import that in. And I want to see what happens just with this piece alone before I mess around with any other pieces. Let's see what just this does all on its own. So there's the doll that we have in T-Pose that we're going to try this method on. And I'll append in the cutter. Now this comes in at a really weird large scale, so I'm not even going to bother with that. I'm going to go to divide it a few times. Oh, I forgot to add creases in all these areas and I need to do that in order for this to work properly. For that I'm just going to do it in Z-Modeler. I'm going to switch here Z modeler and you can navigate over an edge and hold space and you can see it's set to insert single edge loop. So as long as you're hovering over an edge you can insert edge loops and crease the model.
So we'll add some creases. So that when we divide, this works well. Adding, adding just a, several little creases to make sure that when this thing uh, smooths it retains its shape. I probably need to do that on the inside as well. Now that can be a bit challenging in ZBrush to uh, do things like this on the inside of a mesh. But there's a hundred different ways to do any task in ZBrush. Set the Z modeler. For some reason it's not inserting the edge loops anymore. There it is. Yeah, I feel like there's still another edge that needs an edge loop, but it's hard for me to see it from this angle. Er. So poly modeling in ZBrush has come a long way, but it's still a little bit infuriating when you need to do something simple. I'm going to hide that mesh, and I'm going to do auto groups. And what this is going to let me do is hide the outside and only see the inside. So now I can come in and place my Z modeler uh, creases where I need to. Problem solving in action. Oh, yeah. And you want to make sure you want to hover right on top of an edge because if you hover over a face, it'll do a different action. You know, I'm going to switch this to, <clears throat> even on a face, I think I can do an insert edge loop. Is it possible? Hmm. I don't see insert edge loop. So no, it's not possible. Just have to be careful as I hover over this edge. All right, there you go. That should do it. Unify that group again. And then let's do a divide. And you can see now we retain the shape that we're looking for. You know, it would be cool to actually have a cutter on the outside of the shoulder as well. Because that way I can cut for the body, and that looks good. And then I can cut somewhere over here for the rest of the arm. And that should look good too, in theory. So I'm going to keep the poly count low for a second. Continue my hybrid bastardization. I don't know if that's a bad word anymore. Of... Uh, poly modeling using ZBrush and Maya and I'm gonna do a extrude of the entire poly loop so while I'm hovering over polygon I'll press space switch this to poly loop and I'll do an extrude and in theory this should extrude the whole loop it didn't why didn't it ah here we go extrude poly loop so that didn't work there it go, that worked. So I'm gonna come to right around here and do an extrude poly loop.
I'm gonna mask that edge selection, invert it, and then try to move it in place. And it's very thick, so it's not ideal. And this is the, some of the issues I have with poly modeling in ZBrush is that it doesn't give me the control I need uh, to do some basic, basic things. So what I'm going to do first is come in here over the edge with ZModeler on. And make just a tiny crease over here so I can make a tiny extrusion. Just like that. And then I'll do an extrude poly loop outward. And this is a challenge with creating something for articulation and booleans that works in multiple case scenarios. Something that's a brush that's worth sharing. All right, there we go. So now we've got a cutter for the shoulder and the body, and we've got a cutter for the arm, at least the first part. In theory, this should work. We'll see. <clears throat> All right, I'll need to add some more creases. So let's come in here, unify the poly group, and switch back to my Z modeler, and add some creases here. I don't know what's happening. Ah, I was making creases on the other side. All right, there we go. Some more creases over here, and then we should be good to test this. And likely what I'll do, guys, is I'll make sure this works properly and release the brush next week. That way, I know for sure that it works and I'm not trying to put out a product that's subpar. All right. Let's test this. Press Control W, divide, divide, divide. Okay, so now we've got a cutter for the shoulder and body area as well as the ball joint. So it should create a full ball in there. And then we can try to combine this with our secondary cutters, including the pin and the inside uh, separator. And let's see how that works. So I will delete lower and duplicate this, do a DynaMesh, let's do a DynaMesh at, let's see what 128 resolution does first. That looks like 128 resolution did pretty well for us, and I'll decimate it down. Okay, that should have pre-processed. Got Salman Ijaz on Facebook. What's going on, bro? Thanks for joining. 
Shubham Bharadwaj saying, what are we doing in Maya? I was trying to create a quick poly base for my shoulder boolean cutter. And then I finished it in Z Modeler in ZBrush. All right, now let's see if this strange alien looking device thing cuts the way I expect it to. So I'll go over, navigate over to the side here, shift to snap, and then I'll do create IMM brush, create insert mesh, new. And the reason for doing that is to just be able to come to the body and draw it on manually. You can adjust, adjust the depth of your model here. Let me make sure you guys can see what I'm seeing. I've got my depth slider right here in my UI, which if you want to access it, that's under brush and depth right there. And the deeper you make this, the deeper it'll actually go from default. And so I want to make sure that it's a decent size and I'll split unmasked points. Turn on my transparency mode and get it into the right position. Take a look at this from a few different angles. maybe scale it up a tad but I want to make sure that it is not interpenetrating out at any point just perfectly fitting in there but that's going a bit too far in now into the mesh I'll scale down just a smidge peeking out the back so let's move it in now it's peeking out the front Ugh, can't win I think I'll slightly adjust my model on the outside just to give it a little bit of inflation on the shoulder area to make sure that that works All right, and now let's test this. We'll switch this to be a Boolean cutter, go to render, Booleans, turn on our live Boolean. And the pin is way too high. Uh, actually, is there a pin? What is that? There doesn't need to be a uh, cutter in there. Oh, I see, it's just peeking out of the top. That's what that is. So I'll go to inflate. Just inflate that shoulder up slightly so it's not giving me any weirdness. And let's see what the hell is going on really in here. <coughs> so I'll go to make boolean mesh and see what it gives me. Doug E is asking, did you ever consider creating this mesh using sweep profile in 3D mesh? I don't know what a sweep profile is. So I'm not really sure. I haven't considered that because I don't know how what that specific technique is. Alright, here we go. Did the Boolean mesh. There it is. If we do a polyframe and do an auto groups, we should be able to see it now. Bust into a few different parts. So let's see what we've got. I'll do a group split. And we've got a few different pieces. We've got the shoulder being cut out properly with the snap in rotation pin going deep in there. So that I like. We've got the ball joint almost completely cutting out 
and giving us the piece we need and that I like and then this piece is kind of the leftover shoulder which isn't really necessary so I'm just gonna toss that the downside of articulation is you will see seams so this is kind of what we're left with so I don't know this is kind of an extreme case scenario designed to work for you know any case but now you can come in and sculpt this area up and make sure that it lines up with the rest of your volumes however this only will rotate in one direction so we need to add another piece which is our let's see where's our cutter and navigate over to that so that's the piece I need to complete this piece and let's see if I can get it to work so right now I'm just gonna drop it in there and try to slide it in place and hope it works and like I said I'll try to get the model ready uh, for giving away next week that way I have time to perfect it go snap it perfect go to my deformation size scale that down Let's move it up And framing in ZBrush doesn't work always for me either. There we go. Move it in place. So there's got to be a better way of creating this, and I think I may have already thought of one back in uh, Maya or back in uh, Z Modeler. But I want to see what this does to this piece first. I have a clue what it'll do. So in order for this to work properly, this piece has to be larger than this ball joint. So I'm going to have to scale it up slightly more. And for the sake of ease, I'm just going to do it from here using my transpose. That's way too big. We can turn on live boolean also to see what's happening on the fly. All right, let's try this and see what what happens. So I'm going to set this to be my Boolean cutter. 
and let's go to boolean make boolean mesh all right dougie's answering the question about sweet profile 3d mesh it's a base tool if you click on one of your tools on the right side docker you will get all of your 3d mesh choices cube 3d cylinder 3d sphere ring etc and you'll find a sweet profile 3d in there all right sweet thank you for letting me know Look like it should be around here somewhere. A sweet profile 3D. There it is. Oh, I see. I have used these before. Uh, you can basically adjust it on the fly to kind of create different shapes. Um, I haven't messed with it extensively though, so I don't really want to mess with it right now. All right, here we go. This should be our mesh that we just did the cutting out of. Let's do another auto groups and a group split. All right. So this gives us kind of what I'm looking for. Now that area isn't perfect, and I'd, I'd prefer it to be just perfectly aligned so that we have this piece separated off on its own. And I think I, I know how to do that uh, by adding a piece to the Boolean cutter on the inside of my mesh. And then we're left with this on the outside which is also close but no cigar. It's not ideal. Hmm. This area also would need to be filled in in ZBrush. So you'd need to take your clay brush after you do a little bit of dynameshing at a higher resolution. At a higher resolution than that. And then all of this area would need to get filled in in order for this to look like a good uh, ball joint. So my boolean cutting might be a bit too uh, extensive right now. Just trying to visualize and see what I'd actually want the finished result to look like. And since I'd want the finished result to still maintain this shape, it doesn't make sense for my Boolean cutter to cut internally so much it should just kind of go straight from that outer edge to the rest of the body I mean to the rest of the body of the arm I guess This is what ZBrush is really, really great for to me, is just being able to visualize, because I think in 3D, and I can't often think like an engineer, that's still so, a new skill that I'm trying to master, but I can sculpt my way into things feeling and looking the way I want them to. All right, so basically this side is how we'd want the finished arm to be and then this side is what we wouldn't want so ultimately my idea for that boolean cutter to come in and then come outward it's a waste of time it should just kind of go straight and then kind of veer off all right so let's go back to our cutter and see how we can adjust it to achieve those results I'm going to go step back in history a little bit. A 
there's when I'm creasing and creating that piece. That I like. This is the part that I feel is unnecessary. So it should basically connect from here direct to here. While the inside remains the same. And the inside we're going to need to find a way to add a few more pieces for this cutter. Such that we get the perfect shape in one go. I think the easiest way is to delete uh, edge loops and see if that'll automatically line up. So first thing I'll do is go to Z Modeler. Let's add insert an edge loop over here somewhere. Maybe a little bit lower. Something like that. All right, now that edge loop looks like it's in line with that one right there. So let's see if we can just now delete entire edge loops. So I'll switch, hold space over an edge. Instead of click insert, I'll say delete. And then I'll delete edges. See if it's working. I don't see it working. Is it happening on the inside? Nope. Delete edge, edge loop complete. There you go. So by deleting these edge loops, we're changing the shape uh -oh, of our mesh. and making it a better cutter. So in theory now, I don't even need all of this other stuff, but it's good to have, I think. Let's just see how this works. And the inside still creates the perfect circle. All right, so that much I like. Next, we need to add the pin cutter to this, and we need to add the internal component, which helps to rotate the joint in other directions. I think the easiest way to do that is to just add a cylinder that's the perfect sphere shape and drop it in the center of that. <coughs> Makes sense in my head. Pixel Desires asking, have you checked out the IMM toy joints brush? No, I have not. I'm sure someone's made this before me, but let's Google it. IMM Toy Joints Brush. Mm. Looks like a thread on ZBrush Central. Looks like all sorts of stuff in here, but not necessarily uh, a direct link. So let's go back. I'm not really sure where that is, Pixel Desire. Let's see, it's saying it's in ZBrush, made by Joseph Drust. Oh, I'm sure. Okay, if it comes pre-installed, then it'll be in Lightbox. Lightbox, tools, brushes, IMM brushes, insert IMM, and let's see if there is a joints brush. Not really sure where it is, Pixel Desire. If you see it, let me know. Otherwise, I'll look around a little bit and then move on.
I also haven't updated ZBrush to the very, very latest version. So if it's something that was recently released, I may not see it in here. But Druss did make an excellent uh, joints cutters brush that he was using for demoing. And so that may be somewhere around. I'm not sure where. I'm just going to try to keep developing my own too. He's saying press B. Well, pressing B where? Just like over here? That just goes to blob. And I don't think it's pre-installed over here. IMM parts, machine parts. I don't see any IMM joints. So yeah, not really sure. All right. So let's go to this. I'm going to hide half my mesh. Turn on double-sided. And this is a really cool, interesting shape. It is what we're trying to build as a cutter. And when you look at it from the inside, you really get a sense of it, of what's going on. And what we want to do is add a few more pieces. We want to add a cylinder here uh, to cut out the pin. And we want to add a separator of sorts that can break this down into multiple meshes. <coughs> and it needs to be kind of a perfect uh, cylinder that fits in here. So we'll go to IMM cylinder and see if we can draw that out. There's the IMM cylinder pipe. That'll be useful. Let's draw that out. Expand that. Whoop. Move it up in space a little bit. Split unmasked points. What? What just happened here? Did I have something else unmasked? Oh, lame. Ah, it was, okay. Do an auto groups. That should split the just the pin. And I'll split the pin off. Then I'll select using my mask lasso. Actually, you know what? No, I'm just going to go to Z Modeler again. Do that same method that worked really well for me. Instead of delete edge loop complete, I'll do an insert edge loop. Make sure I'm hovering over an edge. And set inset. Insert, not inset. Single edge loop. I want to make this pretty tiny. It's so about that much. Maybe make sure I have X symmetry on so that when it does it, it does it on both ends. Let's go to geometry, modify topology, mirror and weld. Not on the X axis, but in the Z axis. Or in the Y axis. Yeah, there we go, in the Y axis. Turn on my Y symmetry and insert an edge loop. There we go. It's about the thickness that I want. And then I'll try to delete these edge loops. Same as before. Delete edge loop complete. And delete that one in the middle. Basically making our pin cutter thinner. And it looks a bit large right now, so I'll go to Deformation and Size Down. Make sure it's as central as we can make it. And 
and then I will size it down until it's inside my mesh. Let's again hide half the mesh. And I want to make sure that this is going through the inside but not coming out the outside. It looks like it is. So let's add a few more seams to this and see if we can get it done. ZM insert, not inset, single edge loop. Make sure my symmetry is on for my y-axis. It is. Perfect. Right, let's test this. We're going to go to Geometry, Divide, and that looks pretty dope. Okay. Let's also divide the outer edge to make sure it's still working. I don't actually mind this sweep. This may work in my favor, so let's keep that in there for now. So I'm liking that. Let's hide half the mesh again. Or close to half, whatever. All right, I'm liking this shape now for giving me the ball cutter where I want it. But let's see if we can add that third and final piece that separates the pin on its own rotation axis. And for that it's pretty straightforward in theory. Uh, it's basically just a cylinder. Um, what's the fastest way of creating a cylinder that's aligned with this sphere? It's hard to align it perfectly in ZBrush if I'm building off axis. This is just another reason poly modeling is better in poly modeling applications like Cinema 4D, Max, or whatever. If you're building at origin, sometimes it's easier. Let's see, I don't think this is built at origin. Maybe. I think the sphere may have been at origin and I don't think I moved it, so let's see if I can work with that. Good deformation, size. Navigate over to the y-axis, shrink it down, so we want this to be pretty thin. And I want this to also be equidistant from the edges. And same as before, we want it to kind of penetrate out the inside, but not through the outside. And actually, this looks like it is kind of built at origin, or it looks like it's working. Hard to tell until I actually try it. To be safe, I'll just keep it slightly larger. As long as it's not coming out the outer edge, I think it'll work fine.
All right, good. Let's try dividing it. I don't think it'll work if I just divide it as is. Hmm, it does. Oh, okay, because I kept it cylindrical uh, and it had enough geo, it looked like it worked. Okay, let's also then use this to modify topology mirror and weld along the y-axis. And it mirrors it over to the other end. Good. All right. So this, in theory, should give us all the pieces to cut out the ball joint out of the shoulder in one go. Not sure if it'll work, but one way to find out. You got all these pieces, they're all uh, nice and divided, so they've got a bunch of resolution there for me to play with. Three of these are on. I'll click Merge Visible, append that in, turn off everything else, and I will now run a Dynamesh. Before I do that, I'm going to save. Call this ball joint cutter one. Yeah, Pixel Desire 3D. If you're still looking for the joints uh, Boolean cutter, maybe it is in the latest version of ZBrush, and I don't have that. I tend to update every other month or so. Sometimes their updates come out a lot quicker, and I should be doing it faster. I'm on the beta team, but it's been a busy month. Let's see. All right. So let's give this a shot. We'll keep it all together, and we'll go to Geometry Dynamesh. Let's see what happens at 128 resolution. So this is about 1.5 million, and it looks like I didn't lose any detail in there. Uh, I'm going to cut it in half and see. Turn on double-sided. So it's not ideal. It's still a bit uh, janky. And I don't want it to be that janky. Oh, also, looks like this outer cylinder is coming through my pin. And I don't want that. So I want to cut the cylinders uh, in such a way that the pin isn't affected. See, good. That's exactly why we checked. All right. Delete that. Delete that. All right. So I'm going to take this pin cutter. I'll duplicate it. Make it a Dynamesh cutter. And actually, before I do that, I'll Dynamesh. And then I'll make it a cutter. Same thing here. I'll Dynamesh these pieces. Why are they not visible? There they are. And then now I've got the pin basically cutting that space out of them. So I'll go Boolean make Boolean mesh. And I will append that in. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, auto groups. Delete that hidden component. I don't need that. Delete the cylinder as is. Don't need that. And let's try that again. We'll merge all these pieces together and see if it works. So merge visible, append, the cutter. All right, there it is. Let's try to do a Dynamesh. 
And we know 120 at resolution was a bit janky, so let's now do it at 250 to see what happens. All right, <laughs> Hyperspace B saying bless you, thank you very much. I think it's probably because I sneezed. I sneeze so often sometimes I don't even remember. <laughs> All right, so that's strange. That pin still looks like it's, there's some cylinder space that's cutting through, which is, shouldn't be happening. Oh, I see. It's because it's dynameshed all the way through. So it's... Yeah, I see what's happening. Hmm, that's tough. How do I get that to not do that? Hmm. Because I want the pin to cut all the way through and leave just that piece. But in ZBrush, when I dynamesh, the outside and the inside kind of flow together. Which works well for all the other parts. Just not there. Just not with the pin. Oh, and you know what? If I think about it, this won't work still. Because even though it's going to cut out the area that I want, all of this also should be cut out. Yeah, this shape needs to be a bit more complex still. Because let's try it right now. 5.6 million polys, quite a bit much. But I will... Now, I already know this won't work. So I still need to work on this a bit more. Because if these two pieces merge together... Let's try it. I'm going to duplicate each. Merge them together. And then do a Dynamesh. That stays the same. The inside doesn't get cut out. Okay, good. I like that. That is a good functional piece. Now with this other piece... This being the cutter is good for the outside of the mesh, but not good for the inside of the mesh still. Maybe. Let's test it out. Merge down into these pieces and then Dynamesh it and see if it still gives us that issue. Yep, as soon as I get that cylinder to merge with the outside, it starts to give us that issue. So that's problematic. I think the best way to do that is then to have just the pin be separate on its own. Yeah, because that won't work properly for us. And do that.
decimating it down and I'll try to run it. And that'll be the last test of the day. And then I'll perfect this brush and then next week we'll release it. Make that window screen a little bit larger again. <laughs> Still computing. Takes a while to pre process almost six million polys to break down. Akhenaten Ramsey's on YouTube saying, I love you, man. These articulation videos are the best. <laughs> well, I don't know how great this video is because I'm you're seeing me struggle and figure out how to make this thing. We 3D artists like to pretend we know all. We're perfect. But no, we all need to figure this stuff out. Joseph Dress might be perfect. He has a different mind. But the rest of us are trying to figure it out. All right, here we go. Pre-process, going to decimate this down pretty small. And then I will merge it in with this ball cutter. Which is 61,000 poly, so that can be decimated down as well. Go ahead and merge those two pieces, but I won't dynamesh them so that it'll stay separate. And then let's try this out. We'll go to create, insert mesh, new, and let's try it out on our doll. I want to try it on a just clean doll. So let's try it on. Actually, you know what? Fine. I'll just try it on this one, just on the other arm. It is an insert mesh brush, so it should work in either direction. Hmm. It is trying to draw it out on the normal axis, though, which is annoying. Uh, sometimes you just want it to draw straight out and you can hold shift and it does the trick but right now it is not doing the trick which is annoying yeah it's not snapping into place either okay maybe I hit it at a weird angle when I created the insert mesh yeah, I think that's what it was. Create insert mesh brush, new, while it snapped to this angle. And let's see if that's any better. That's still wonky. 
the ZBrush is trying to draw it out at the normal's axis, and even when I hold shift, it isn't. Uh, Letting me snap. Just gonna draw out a cube really quickly, just to help me draw it out the way I want. Delete it. And then start moving it into place. Sometimes software fights you. It's inevitable. This looks like a Jetsons outfit right now, doesn't it? Did anyone watch that TV show Jetsons back in the day? It's the best. Okay, turn on transparency mode. I'm basically just using this for testing purposes, so let's see what this looks like. And where is my pin? The pin's going in the wrong direction, so that definitely needs to rotate. So I should change the have some marking outside for the pin so it's really obvious for people when they're using this brush to make it a bit more user friendly. All right, we're gonna set this to be a cutter. Move it in a little bit more. Navigate back up to my mesh and do a make boolean mesh. Let's go ahead and append that in here. Turn everything else off, turn that back on. We'll do an auto groups and a group split. So let's see what this gives us. This gives us the cutout of the body. That's good. It gives us the pin, which looks good. So that's nice. It gives us all the extra junk around the mesh, which is not so nice. We do want to try to eliminate that step. And it gives us the ball joint here with the pin going inside of it. And it pops this off, but it doesn't quite separate it. <clears throat> it should be able to separate this piece onto its own mesh. And so the cylinders aren't enough, there needs to be something here to force that separation uh, into its own mesh. Basically like a closing off of the cylinder. But I'm close. I know what I need to do to get this to eliminate a few more steps. Uh, and yeah, I'm gonna keep working at this and have it ready for you guys next week promise. So thanks for joining me uh, for this week's stream and trying to see how I figure out creating this articulation brush. This ball joint boolean is the trickiest one I've had to do so far. The rest I could make in like five minutes. Uh, but I will get this done and then you will have that brush next week. So thanks again for uh, sharing and joining. Oh, Pixel Desires dropped a link to a Dropbox uh, to that IMM Toy Joints beta brush. Uh, I believe that's uh, Dress, Joseph Dress brush. So since you all are so eager to stick around, I'll drop that in Restream and uh, you can try it from there. <clears throat> Wait, that's just Twitch TV. That's not right. I need to get the Dropbox link. There it is. There you go. Okay. 
So thank you for sharing that pixel desire and thank you to everyone for joining. Hopefully you found that a little bit illuminating. You saw a little bit of poly modeling, you saw a little bit of booleans, you saw a little bit of uh, Maya 2 ZBrush workflow. So we went over a bunch of stuff. Uh, next week we'll hopefully wrap up that articulation brush and then I will be able to release it to you um, and you can help me test it out and see if it works. All right, thanks again for joining and then see you next Thursday. Cheers.